All right, so in this problem, I have four to the power of x is equal to eight. So obviously here, I wanna find the value of x. So for my solution, first start by rewriting my problem. So I have four to the power of x is equal to eight. Now four here, this is the same thing as two squared. So I'm gonna rewrite this as two squared to the power of x. I, all I did was replace four with two squared. And now eight, this is the same thing as two to the power of three. So I'm gonna replace eight with two to the power of three. So I have two squared to the power of x is equal to two to the power of three. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 2 times x, which is simply 2 to the power of 2x. And now this is equal to 2 to the power of 3. And now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m, is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. Meaning in this case, 2x is equal to m and 3 is n. So I have 2x is equal to 3. And this is a simple equation. All I have to do is divide both sides by 2. So then these two cancel out and I get x is equal to 3 over 2. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x plus one is equal to x. So to solve this, I'm gonna start by subtracting x on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x to the power of x plus one minus x is equal to zero. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So x to the power of x plus one, this is gonna be equal to x to the power of x times x to the power of one. Now I have this minus x is equal to zero. Now if I factor out x, I get x times x to the power of x minus one is equal to zero. So now this gives me two equations. I have x is equal to zero, and I have x to the power of x minus one is equal to zero. So x equals zero, this is already a solution. Now for x to the power of x minus one equals zero, I'm gonna add one on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x to the power of x is equal to one. Now, because x has to be the same number, we obviously know that, well, what number to the power of self is equal to one? That's gonna be one, right? Because one to the power of one is equal to self. So x is equal to one. And there's no, actually, there's no other number that when you take the power of itself is going to equal 1. S meaning x equals 1 is the only solution to this equation. So now to check. The original equation was x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. So x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. And our first solution was 0. So if I plug in zero, I get zero to the power of zero plus one is equal to zero. Now zero plus one is one, so I have zero power to the power of one equals zero, and zero to the power of any number is itself, so I get zero equals zero. Now to check for one, I get one to the power of one plus one is equal to one. One plus one is two, so I get one to the power of two is equal to one, and one to the power of any number itself, so one equals one.
All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x is equal to 100. So I'm going to first start by taking the natural log, or ln, on both sides. So I have ln x to the power of x is equal to ln 100. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this x1 and b to the front. So this can equal b times ln a. So for ln x to the power of x, I can move x to the front, and I'm going to get x times ln x is equal to ln 100. Now ln 100, that's the same thing as ln of 10 squared. So I get x times ln x is equal to ln 10 squared. And if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, again, I can move 2 to the front. So I get x times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. Now, there's something called the W Lambert function. And if I take the W Lambert function of something in the form e to the power of, sorry, a times e to the power of a, this is going to equal a. So this is basically what the W Lambert function is. So if there's something in the form a to the power, a times e to the power of a, that's going to equal a. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to rewrite x here as e to the power of ln of x because e, the e and ln cancel out and this results in simply x. So I'm just going to rewrite x as e to the power of ln of x and I have this times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. And now this is in the form a times e to the power of a. So now if I take the w Lambert function on both sides, This results in ln x equaling w of 2 times ln 10. And now if I take e to the power of both sides, I get e to the power of ln x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 ln 10. And e to the power of ln x, that's going to equal x. So I get x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 times ln 10. And this is equal to 3.597285, which rounds up to 3.597. So this is my answer to this problem. Alright, so in this problem, I have 2 to the power of x plus a to the power of x is equal to 10. So, I want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, I get 2 to the power of x plus a to the power of x is equal to 10. Now from here, a, I can rewrite as 2 to the power of 3. So I get 2 to the power of x plus 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x is equal to 10. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of x plus 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x, that's the same thing as 2 to the power of 3x. And now this is equal to 10. Now, I can rewrite this as 2, oops, plus sign, 2 to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 10. Now, I'm going to let 2 to the power of x equal to the variable y. So I get y plus y to the power of 3 is equal to 10. Now, if I, sub if I subtract 10 on both sides, these two cancel out, and I get y to the power of 3 plus y minus 10 is equal to 0. Now, to actually solve this equation, we need to first start by finding one solution and then use that one solution to find the rest of the remaining solutions. And to find that first solution, what we actually have to do is just test in values, plug in values, and see if they're right. 
So I'm going to first start with y equals 1. If y equals 1, I get 1 to the power of 3 plus 1 minus 10. And this is equal to 2 minus 10, which is equal to negative 8, which is wrong. Now, if y is equal to 2, I get 2 to the power of 3 plus 2 minus 10. 2 to the power of 3 is 8, so I get 8 plus 2 minus 10, which is equal to 10 minus 10, which is equal to 0. So this is right, meaning y equals 2 is a solution to this. So this also means that I can divide y to the power of 3 plus y minus 10 with y minus 2, because 2 is a solution. If I plug in 2 and y minus 2, I get 0. So if I do this, I can find the remaining solutions. So the easiest way to do this is by synthetic division. So for synthetic division, if you guys don't know how to do it yet, y minus 2, since this is 2, I put this on the outside. And from here, I f for my numerator, I focus on my coefficients. So these two have a coefficient of 1. So I get 1. But we should also have y squared, y to the power of 3. The second, uh, sorry, the second lowest exponent is y squared. But as you see, there is no y squared. So that's going to be a 0. Then the third lowest is just y to the power of 1, which is y, and we have 1, so the coefficient is 1. And then finally, we have negative 10 at the end. So now to do this, I'm going to first drop down 1. 2 times 1 is 2, so I'm going to put 2 here. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 1 plus 4 is 5. 2 times 5 is 10. Negative 10 plus 10 is 0. So I get a remainder of 0. And... I get 1, 2, 5, which will be my coefficients. So I get y squared plus 2y plus 5. Meaning, y to the power of 3 plus y minus 10 divided by y minus 2 is equal to y squared plus 2y plus 5. So now, we can say that y minus 2 times y squared plus 2y plus 5 is equal to 0. And now, using this equation, we can find all our solutions to our original equation. So to do this, I get two equations. I get y minus 2 is equal to 0, and y squared plus 2y plus 5 equals 0. So for y minus 2 equals 0, obviously this is easy. I just add 2 on both sides, and I get y equals 2. And this is a solution we already got. Now, for y squared plus 2y plus 5 is equal to 0, I'm going to use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is 2, and c is 5. So I get y is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 5 all over 2a, so 2 times 1. And this is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 4 times 5, which is 4 minus 20, which is negative 16, over 2, which is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1 over 2. And the square root of negative 1, if you guys already didn't know, is the same thing as i. So the square root of negative 1 is equal to the imagined number i. So this is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 16i over 2. And now the square root of 16 is equal to 4. So I get y is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 4i over 2. And now if I divide this by 2, I get y equals negative 1 plus or minus 2i. So this is my, these are two more solutions of y. So I have three solutions in total of y, but hold on, we're not done yet, because remember how we let 2 to the power of x equal to y. So 2 to the power of x, well, how can this equal an imaginary number? It can't, meaning this is not a proper solution for y, and my only equation from this is 2 to the power of x is equal to positive 2. And this is easy. All I have to do is... We write 2 as 2 to the power of 1, and these two exponents equal each other, meaning x is equal to 1. So x is equal to 1 is my solution for this problem.